is coming. All these voices. They're not yours. You had no right to them when you were alive, and you have no right to them when you're dead. Huh? That's what it sounded like. Good, you know who I am. And you know I'm not playing. You're going to let those women go. In Jesus' name, you're going to let those women go. Is there a demon here watching us right now? Watching this right now. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Staring into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr. And with me as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's having a good night. Thank you, brother. Tonight's show is going to be interesting and a lot of fun. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about one of old boy's absolute favorite topics, which is Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. Also, to a limited extent, Champ from uh, Cham Lake Champlain, but basically lake monsters in general. And it has to do with a, a discovery of some bones that proved that Nessie was not simply a saltwater marine dinosaur, but also that they were found in freshwater lakes. Very interesting. Also want to tell you, if you hear thunder and lightning or rain, it is one hell of a storm going on right now. I live in the mountains of Virginia, and up here, it, it storms sometimes, and it is storming like a son of a bitch. So if you hear that, just know that's what it is. So without further ado, we're going to get to the article. Tonight's article comes from the Western Journal, and the headline is Loch Ness Monster Could Plausibly Exist, According to Bombshell Discovery. It was written by Jack Davis, and it was published July 28, 2022. A new scientific study provides a definite maybe to the existence of a creature resembling the Loch Ness Monster, but casts doubt on any sightings newer than about 66 million years ago. The study is based on the discovery of some bone fragments belonging to a plesiosaur that was discovered in what scientists believe was a freshwater site in the era of the dinosaurs. Plesiosaurs have long necks, as the Loch Ness Monster is often portrayed as having. But until this find, the marine dinosaur was only found in saltwater environments, according to the Daily Mail. The fossils were found in the Kim Kim Beds of Morocco, where a river system flowed through the desert about 100 million years ago, according to the scientists on the study. The Loch Ness Monster's existence is plausible, according to scientists, after fossils revealed that the plesiosaur may have lived in fresh water, the Daily Mail reported. The bones and teeth were found scattered and in different localities, not as a skeleton. So each bone and each tooth is a different animal, said Dr. Nick Longrich from the University of Bath's Milner Center for Evolution. The teeth show heavy wear similar to those of a Spinosaurus that also lived there at the time, suggesting they ate armored fish in the river. What amazes me is that the ancient Moroccan river contains so many carnivores all living alongside each other said David Martill from the University of Portsmouth. This was no place to go for a swim. Although the finds document that plesiosaurs lived in the river millions of years ago, scientists say there are limits to what can be extrapolated from the find. We don't really know why the plesiosaurs are in fresh water, Longridge said, according to a release from the University of Bath. It's a bit controversial, but who's to say that because we paleontologists have always called them marine reptiles, they had to live in the sea. Lots of marine lineages invaded fresh water. He said the extent to which plesiosaurs lived in fresh water is uncertain. We don't really know, honestly. That's how paleontology works. People ask, how can paleontologists know anything for certain about the lives of animals that went extinct millions of years ago? The reality is we can't always. All we can do is make educated guesses based on the information we have. We'll find more fossils. Maybe they'll confirm those guesses, maybe not, he said. So what does all this mean for Nessie, made famous by a grainy 1934 black and white photo, later claimed to be a hoax? The University of Bath release offered a summary. On one level, it's plausible. Plesiosaurs weren't confined to the seas. 
they did inhabit fresh water. But the fossil record also suggests that after almost 150 million years, the last plesiosaurs finally died out at the same time as the dinosaurs, 66 million years ago. And that is the end of this article. Okay, so as you can see from that article, they found a series of bones, which suggests that there were multiple plesiosaurs living in fresh water. And you might say, well, so what? What the hell does that have to do with Nessie? Why would them finding some bones in an area that had fresh water instead of salt water mean that the Loch Ness Monster exists? Well, the short answer is it, it doesn't, really, but it kind of does in a way also. It proves that it's plausible. And the reason for that is a lot of people think that the Loch Ness Monster and Champ from Lake Champlain and other lake monsters like that are plesiosaurs that have survived since dinosaur times. I myself have gone back and forth on this issue multiple times. Uh, like I've said a million times on this show, I always tell you the truth. I'll be honest with you, even when it makes me look bad. Plesiosaur fits. Kind of. There are some things that don't fit about a plesiosaur. Uh, one of the major hang-ups that I had about a plesiosaur being Nessie is simply that they were a saltwater animal and not a freshwater species. Now, I have said on other shows that they could be like the bull shark that can do both. They can go freshwater or saltwater. And that very well could be what the plesiosaur was. Um, but with this discovery, that kind of knocks that off the list of reasons why the plesiosaur couldn't have been Nessie. There are others, though. And I want to get into some of those reasons tonight to try to figure out whether it's possible that Nessie is a plesiosaur or not. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the temperature. During the time when Nessie lived as a plesiosaur, if that's what she is, and now as she lives in, in the Loch Ness. During that time period of the dinosaurs, it was around four degrees hotter than it is now. What that means is that although some dinosaurs would be very comfortable in the tropical areas of our planet, the jungles, that kind of thing, a lot of the dinosaurs would have a lot of trouble because they are used to a much warmer environment. Now, when you're dealing with an aquatic dinosaur, the differences are even more profound because differences in, in water temperature affect the animals there a lot differently than it does land animals. So there would be a definite struggle for a plesiosaur to exist in warm tropical waters because they are colder than they were when the plesiosaur was alive and active. But when you're dealing with a place like Scotland, that water is a lot colder. That is not tropical water whatsoever. So to me, it's kind of a rough stretch to say that a plesiosaur could just have survived and be completely fine in Loch Ness because of the difference in the water temperature. Not saying it's impossible because it's been a long damn time since dinosaurs were around. So it's possible that the plesiosaur has evolved. And if they are capable of going from salt water to fresh water, maybe the water temperature doesn't affect them that much at all either. Uh, but that's the first reason that I have that makes me wonder if a plesiosaur is actually a good fit or not. Another one is the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere. Back in the time of the majority of the dinosaurs, you're talking up to 35% of the atmosphere was made up of oxygen. That is a very oxygen-rich environment. Um, nowadays, around sea level, it is 21%. So as you can see, that's a 14% difference in the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. So what that means is animals that are used to 35% are going to struggle, mightily struggle at 21. They're not going to be able to breathe very well. They're eventually probably going to end up dying from altitude sickness, believe it or not. Because what happens with altitude sickness is your lungs can't get enough oxygen and they can't oxygenate the blood and you end up dying because of it. And that's basically what's going to happen to 
any kind of dinosaurs or creatures that are used to a 35% oxygen level, and then they go to a 21. Once again, as I said with the temperature, long time since dinosaurs roamed the earth and now. So even though there's a big difference, that does not mean that the animal could not have evolved to live in a lower oxygen environment. Um, one thing that points to that being a definite possibility is you have a lot of animals today that are alive on Earth that were alive in the time of the dinosaurs, such as a lot of the reptiles, some of the lizards. You have um, species of shark that were alive during the time of the dinosaurs. You have the coelophant, which is still alive today, which was alive in the time of the dinosaurs. You have alligators and crocodiles, which were alive in the time of the dinosaurs. There's a lot more, too. So you have a lot of species on Earth that lived in a time when it was warmer and it was a higher oxygen environment, and they are alive today. So that is not necessarily a disqualifier, but it's just going to make it a lot more difficult for that creature to survive. Now, if you're talking about an aquatic animal, you're also talking about where in the water this thing lives. You have animals that live near the surface. Those animals are going to require a much higher temperature to survive. Then you have animals that live way down deep. Those animals are used to a lower temperature because it's colder down there because the sun doesn't penetrate through as easily, especially when you get very deep where it's dark because the sun doesn't penetrate at all. So they can still survive because the temperature doesn't change all that much down there for them. But it all really depends on, on where that creature lives. We know that the plesiosaur could come up to the surface, breathe air. We know that the plesiosaur would, would hunt fish, um, armored fish and different kinds of fish. Now in, in the lock there are, woo, you hear that one? In the lock there are sturgeon that could easily be able to feed this thing. So it's not a matter of a lack of food. Um, was the plesiosaur a creature that spent a lot of its time way down deep? If that's the case, then it could pretty easily survive today's temperatures. Now, I don't know whether the plesiosaur was a surface-dwelling dinosaur or a dinosaur that spent a lot of time down in the depths. And the truth of the matter is, really nobody knows. We know that it would surface for air. So that would tell you that it, it can't be something that's solely down deep. But if it lived in a mid-range, then maybe. But that's another factor that we have to think about when we come to this conclusion of whether or not it's a plesiosaur or not. I think both of those examples that I gave you are concerns that I have with the plesiosaur being the Loch Ness Monster. But also, they are kind of negated by time. And I know that's kind of a, a cop-out to say, but it's the truth. We have examples, like I said earlier, of other species of animals that have been alive since then and are still flourishing today. So that means we have examples of animals that made that transition. A lot of people think that birds today are what a lot of the dinosaurs evolved into. The dinosaurs are the ancestors of a lot of today's birds. Their skeletal structures are the same. Uh, they have a very strange breathing apparatus. They have lungs, and they have like this little air bladder-like thing, too, that almost acts as like a bellows that forces air through their bodies. And what's interesting is a lot of people said at one time that the reason why birds have that is so that they can breathe while they're flying at high altitude. But if you look at the physiology of a lot of dinosaurs, like take the brontosaurus, for example. Uh, the brontosaurus had that little air bladder as well that pushed air throughout the body. And brontosauruses didn't fly. I mean, they were gigantic. There's no way they flew. So I think it was more a, a more efficient breathing system to be able to handle lower air temperatures and lower concentrations of, of oxygen in the air and be able to, to live no matter what the environment is. That's definitely an evolutionary survival edge. Now, if the plesiosaur also had this air bladder and lungs that would help to distribute the oxygen and make it so that it could breathe in lower oxygen environments, then it could be a very 
a very good contender to be a survivor to this day. So basically the question is, is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Uh, there are concerns, and I've stated them, but for every concern, there's a workaround. Because we just don't have enough information, unfortunately. Nobody's ever grabbed a plesiosaur, thrown it up on a table for us to cut open and examine. So all we have to go by is bones. And there's only so much information you can gather from bones. Um, do I think that Nessie is a real creature? Yes, 100% I do. I believe that Nessie exists. I believe that Champ exists. I believe that those kind of creatures exist. You have down in the Congo, you have the Mokele Membe. Now that is a smaller version of an animal that looks a lot like a brontosaurus, but it's just smaller. Now I talked earlier about higher oxygen levels at 35% as opposed to 21% today. That's a big deal because when you have higher oxygen levels like that, you have a lot more plant growth and you have a lot more animal growth. Everything gets bigger. So as the percentage of oxygen in the environment shrinks, it would stand to reason that the size of the life on the planet would also shrink. So that could be an explanation why you have things like the Mokele Membe, which is essentially a brontosaurus is what it looks like, but it's a lot smaller. It's only like six or seven feet instead of like 100, 200 feet. Could that be because of the amount of oxygen in the environment now that it has shrunk over time? Possibly. Or could it just be like one of the brontosaurus's cousins, a smaller version? Because there were a lot of different dinosaurs that looked like that, that weren't quite as big. Either way you look at it, I think it's a dinosaur. I think that you still have species of dinosaur on Earth today that existed. And you might think that's crazy. But I believe that because I don't believe that dinosaurs died out hundreds of millions of years ago. I believe that dinosaurs lived with mankind. I believe that that is what the stories in the Bible and all throughout the Middle Ages of dragons are. I believe dragons are dinosaurs. And I believe that's what these people were seeing and calling dragons. I believe there's a lot of different animals that existed a lot longer than science thinks they did. Because you've got to realize, when they say, well, this animal went extinct 200 million years ago, the reason they say that is because they haven't found any fossils that date earlier than that. So in other words, they say, well, 200 million is the earliest we have. So we don't have anything that dates later, is what I meant to say, not earlier. Later than that. So we don't have anything that dates 50,000 years ago, or 100,000 years ago, or 10,000 years ago. So how can you say that this dinosaur was still around 10,000 years ago if we don't have evidence of it? Well, just because you haven't found the fossil doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And just because you don't have a set of bones saying that it was here 10,000 years ago does not mean it wasn't. For the longest time, they believed that Homo florensius, which was a early hominoid uh, species that looked a lot like the hobbit of mythology, they said that died out a hundred and some thousand years ago because they didn't have any examples of it after that. Well, they just found not too long ago bones in a cave of Homo florensius that date to less than 10,000 years ago. So that proves that Homo florensius, the real life hobbit existed up to 10,000 years ago and might still exist today. Who knows? That's pretty, pretty uh, short time ago in geological terms. So, there's nothing saying that some of these dinosaurs haven't survived. Did they survive in gigantic numbers? Probably not. There has to be a breeding population. So that means there can't just be one or two. There has to be several hundred to keep this thing going. But if you're talking about something like Loch Ness, which is connected to the ocean through a series of, of rivers and channels and, and underground uh, tunnels, why couldn't a aquatic dinosaur make its way from the ocean to the lock makes a total sense to me why it could happen. And you could easily conceal a breeding population of plesiosaurs in the ocean because the ocean is vast and we don't know a hell of a lot about it. So it's very possible that that's the case. Um, we have example after example after example of creatures 
that they claim were either mythical or did not exist or had went extinct that now are recognized by science. I mentioned the coelophant. Also, you have the silverback gorilla down in the Congo. That was something that was completely legendary. The tribes people there talked about it all the time, that it was a real creature. But science laughed at them. They didn't believe it until they found one. And now we know that it's real. Uh, the giant squid, another great example. The kraken of myth. That thing was supposedly legendary and ne never existed. It was a fantasy. And then they got it on film. They know it exists now. There's all kinds of things like that. So basically what I'm saying, science does a lot, but science is by no means the final word on anything because science is always changing. We don't have settled science on, on pretty much anything. Now, there's a few things that you might say, well, you know, gravity, the science is kind of settled on gravity. Yes, to a point, but there's still little discoveries made all the time that, that further that knowledge. So it's never the final word. It's always a, an evolution of thought and asking questions and learning more, doing experiments and getting different results that change what you thought you knew before. That's what science is. So basically my, my thought on this is it's interesting that the bones were found. I think it's really cool that the bones were found. I think that that definitely takes a big one off my list of reasons why the plesiosaur couldn't be Nessie. Now I've gone back and forth, like I've said, on whether it is or isn't uh, in, my, in my life because some of these things I... I just look into it and I'm just like, I don't know, man. It fits, but it's a saltwater creature, so what the hell would it be doing in a freshwater lake? That doesn't make any sense. And then they find, oh, well, it could do freshwater as well. Okay, cool. So now that means even more plausible in my mind. So I'm going to say that, yes, I believe the Loch Ness Monster exists, and it very well could be a plesiosaur. Um, I don't see any reason it couldn't be. There's concerns I had, but time mitigates those concerns so i don't know my my judgment on it is yes it exists and yes it could be a plesiosaur so i'm gonna throw it to old boy and get his opinion see what he thinks uh, i'm sure this will be interesting because old boy loves nessie he knows a lot about nessie and he studies this a great deal it's one of his favorite things so old boy go ahead brother thank you brother um good evening guys um this is one of my favorite cryptos one of uh, if you guys have been listening to the show for f almost six years five years i think it is five or six i think it's six um nessie is one of my favorite probably the favorite one of them always loved it of the crypto uh bigfoot ufos uh but those are, and mothman are my I, I don't really consider UFOs crypto. Let's throw that one out of there. Um, I'm sorry, Nessie. Um, Bigfoot and the Mothman are my top three, and then Jersey Devil. Um, what's my opinion on this find from, I think it's the University of Bath. Um, they found there was bones, um, teeth, bone fragments of a fresh... A possible freshwater plesiosaur so that breathes life into it could be possible that nessie could be real or champ or whatever one you want to call there's so many different ones but those are the two big ones the one in, in canada off of uh, you know champ i think it's canada and then there's the one in scotland we all know the lockless monster slash nessie this is crazy if this is true, because um, it could have possibly channeled from the ocean to the to uh, the lake. That lake's huge and also has channels out to the ocean. And we got to realize, millions. Of, uh, they said the last one was found sixty six million years ago. They could have found that under well uh, under under the water. They could have found caves the where they could travel. They got used to because some sh there is some sharks that can swim in rivers regular. Uh, water, fresh water. Um, there is some fish can do the same thing. Um, alligators are another one. There's a saltwater alligators. There's fresh wash, fresh water alligators. Um, I don't think it's impossible, but I don't think it's the Nessie you think is a plesiosaur. It's evolved. Um, there's different ones being seen. You know, the one with the humps and the long neck, and then there's one. It's just looks like a 
it has four fins and a long beak not a beak um, a long mouth um, there's also surges are really big there they get they get really big but surges are big fish 15 18 feet sometimes 13 those are the average um, so there's big enough fish to feed them I think they're not living there if Nessie does live there I don't believe that he lives there all the time I think there's a channel that he goes to different places not like the tunnel goes through the ocean or to another lake so that's why we don't see him he can it, it, it's very smart it's elusive and that lake is really big so i don't know it's one of the places i've always wanted to go i'm half scottish anyway so i would love to go you know and ancestry thing and plus i'm irish right next to each other um so um i would love to go to scotland and especially there um Loch Ness. Um, there's a lot of history there. Um, what was his name? Uh, Alast Alistair Crowley used to have a castle there. And they think he's the reason there's... I mean, if you ever done a story about Alistair Crowley, we need to do a show about him. Um, they said it. he was doing magic and, and, and rituals, and they think he brought the Loch Ness Monster... Uh, I don't know if I believe that because there were sightings even before he was there. Um, and then Led Zeppelin ended up buying his house and then somebody else bought it since then. Uh, Robert Page, I think, planted, I think is Robert Page, I think it is. Yeah. Um, and then he sold it to somebody else. So, but there's a lot of stuff there anyway. So, my opinions on this. I don't know, man. It, it's a possibility. I'm not going to say it's impossible that there was a freshwater version of it. I don't think it's as big as the saltwater one. It's it's evolved. Maybe it can go in both, uh, fresh and salt. It evolved from that, and it's a little bit smaller, not as big. Um, just like Champ's a little bit smaller, and it's freshwater again. And there's other sightings of other uh, of these creatures. And then, the, you know, they go to sea serpents and sea monsters. And I believe that. I believe there's stuff in the ocean. I believe there's stuff, you know, we haven't done 90, 10% of the, the ocean. So there's another 90%. We haven't even gone to the, all the way down to the trench. And that trench goes deep. And we only got about less than halfway. There's still stuff there, man. We see stuff all the time. Even back before all this stuff happened, the pirates and stuff, they would have uh, maps. And even in Greece, they had maps of monsters and sea monsters that existed, especially the Kraken. There is giant squids. They've proven it. They're just hard to see, but they, they're there. And they're huge. You know, I may, I think the Megalodon, the Megalodon shark is still exist. They have video of it. You, you know, I think plesiosaurs still exist. That's my opinion. I just think... I think they're in the ocean too, but I also believe they're Nessie something different. Um, you never know. You never know. Somebody could have brought it over, thrown it in there, and it just grew, or it just it channeled itself off millions of years ago and evolved to be in saw fresh water and salt water. That would be crazy if that's true. Um, again, this is one of my favorite creatures of all time. Um always had a heart for Nessie. I think James does too. He loves Nessie. Never want them to be found. I uh, never want them to find them because I know what they're going to do. And again, this is, this is my heart. I don't want to know they're real. If they are great, but then it, it takes the magic away. Is it really real? And it, it was real at one time. Let's go get this false. This isn't like big, you know, like uh, the Jersey devil, and stuff like that, the plesiosaur was real. So Nessie did exist at one time in the 66 million years ago. That's the last, the the newest fossil found. So it was it was here. They existed. They're just extinct. And people said they're still here. Like, uh, uh, there's a lot. There's the dinosaur in Africa, they think. Kambay uh, Membe, I'm messing up the name. I know I am. Um... It's supposed to be a giant stegosaurus, I think, or um, a big giant dinosaur. And people and the natives have been talking about it for years um, and have pictures of it and drawings of it since like two or three hundred years ago. 
So I don't know. Kembe Membe, I think that's how you say his name. And I'm probably killing it, guys, but they say that that exists. Um, there's supposed to be something in this lake, and I think it's in Africa, that when the thunderstorms come, it comes in, and they show like this giant, like uh, there was a video of this giant lightning bolt in, in, in this lake, and you see something splash huge. And there's videos of stuff in the jungle of these kind of weird serpents and giant just sitting there. And you could see it. Um, sorry, you guys can see us now. You could see it's flapping its, uh, uh, um, God, fins. So I don't know, man. There's something, there's stuff out there that we don't know about. And, you know, they found this in the river, by the rivers of, uh, uh, in Morocco. It was a freshwater uh, river that existed millions of years ago, and they're finding bones and fragments of this thing. So, but maybe this was a different version of it. You know, maybe it evolved to be in freshwater. We don't know. Back then, there was, all, and they found other dinosaurs too. It's, it was in the water. There's 66 million years ago. There was a lot of stuff around. We don't even know what was there they either. We, we still haven't unearthed everything. Remember that, guys. Do I believe this theory? It could be a possibility. I've thought of it myself. Me and James have talked about it. We've done shows about the Loch Ness Monsters, Sea Monsters, and all that. And there's a very high chance this is true. I, I believe it. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? You know, we always want to know your comments. What do you think is going on here? Do you think that it's real? Do you think it's just another story? Do you believe that he evolved to be in the fresh water? It could be both. Sea and ocean he she or he uh nessie is a girl wouldn't it be but uh he she or he that's what i should say or multiple of them live there and then they just channel somewhere else during certain times of the year or seasons you know like most like ducks do and stuff like that do you think they do the same thing and they just migrate somewhere else so they can have like a place where they can um mate and have their babies and some sharks do this, some whales do this, dolphins do this. So this could be a possibility. The only thing is we never see them. We've only seen glimpses. You know, they had that picture, the famous one. I think it was in the 30s or 40s. I forget where he took the picture. And then the guy said he faked it. But then they said that he didn't. And there's an argument on that. And, uh, you know, then there's other pictures of Loch There's hundreds of pictures of, Loch Ness monster, of the Loch Ness Monster. I don't call it the monster. I call it Nessie. Plesiosaur. So it could be a possibility, guys. Could be a very vague possibility this is what happened. And what happened is through time, millions of years ago, there was shifts in the, you know, um, the earth where they cracked and they made channels to go, like, say Africa could go to England, or, or, uh, the, um, God, Europe, or Europe can go to the United States, uh, uh, North America, and they channeled and then. There was just different, they were together more and they split off over time and they could have channeled out. They migrated somewhere else. It's possible, guys. You know, just because we don't see things doesn't mean it doesn't exist. That's what a lot of people need to start realizing. Remember, the Silifan millions of years ago was extinct and they found it and it existed now. It's still there. The giant squid, no one thought it existed and it does. The Megrodon, they're proving it exists still. There's video of it numerous times down in these ocean liners where they drill, drill oil and they have cameras. They're seeing giant sharks. They're huge. They may not be the Megrodon of that time, but they're a version of it, a cousin, cousin of some of these species of sharks. And they're huge, 60, 50, 70 feet long, even 50, huge. They have giant wells that come up in giant great whites that have bite marks out of them. Giant tentacles because of they think the kraken exists, the giant that lives in the ocean that used to swallow up uh, boats, huge boats. Do I believe it? We'll put it this way. I've read different stories and you never know what can, you can believe. They had a sonar from one part of the, the world to the other side of the world. A sound that they don't know what it is. Imagine if that was there's something that big in the ocean. Um, the Kraken. Um, 
the Cthulhu, the Cthulhu. I'm probably ruining the name, but that thing's supposed to be huge. Imagine if it is real. Imagine there was some kind of giant there, a couple of them. We don't know. And they're massive, like sky massive, thousands of feet high. What would you guys do? I'm just thinking about it. Just tell me what you guys do. All of a sudden, we're just sitting here one day and these giants just come out of the ocean. What do we do? Can't stop them. They're huge. The military can't stop them. What would happen if Godzilla was real? <laughs> I'm just saying it. I know it's going to sound crazy. We never talk about that. But what if Godzilla is real? And other monsters are real like that. Like five, six, seven hundred feet or taller. What do we do? We're at their mercy. Just want to know. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, tell me what you guys think about this. Do you think this is true? That they found proof that Nessie could have went to the, the lake? Fresh water? Out of the ocean? Could be a possibility. Could have migrated millions of years ago. We never know. We're never going to know because... Well, no, I'm not going to say... But let me take that back. We will know one day. Um, Eventually somebody's going to catch something. May not be Nessie. It may be Ch Jesse. Nessie's... Great, 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 great grandkid. <laughs> but it's huge. You never know, guys. I'm just I'm just trying to be funny. You guys probably sitting here, what the hell is he talking about? No, I'm just throwing out there in opinions and that's what I believe. Um I hope it's not ever gets caught. That's just me. You guys are all screw you. Oh boy, we wanna see that thing. I don't I don't wanna see it as a statue or in a zoo. And that's just my opinion. I don't care what anybody thinks. That's what I don't. I don't want it to be caught. Or some idiot goes and kills it. And actually right now it's illegal. In Scotland you can go to jail for that. So you can for champ too. They've made a bunch of laws on some of these creatures. The megalodon if it's. They, you can't hunt them. So they want to capture it. And make money off of it. Like they want to do with everything. That's why I don't want Bigfoot found. Because of that right there. And I. Bet you $100 they'll kill it. If they find more than one, they'll kill it and try to see what it is and stuff it and make more money. And that's what I, I, I can't stand that. That's one thing I hate about all this is most people are trying to do it for money. Either finding it, being on TV, just like with ghost hunting and UFO hunting. It's not saying everybody. Most people are trying to help people. There's a lot of people who think they want, they've watched TV and, oh, I'm going to be famous or I'm going to get money. And that's a bad, that's the sad thing now. A lot of people are doing that. I'm not saying everyone, so I don't want any. No, there's some people who actually enjoy it and like to help people. And I just want to know if it exists. And just fascinated like I am. I've, I've been a fan since I was a kid, guys. I used to get books in the library and read about these creatures all the time. One of my favorite pastimes. And I'm doing my favorite pastime. This is one thing in my life that I've always wanted to do is talk about crypto, ghost, UFOs, conspiracy theories, history, and I get to do it. And I love every minute of it. I hope you have a good night. And that's my opinion, guys. So there you go, James. Thank you, guys. Leave your comments and let us know what you think about this show. Thank you, brother. I told y'all it'd be interesting. Old boy knows a lot about Nessie. It's one of his favorite things. He's done a lot of studying on it. And he definitely has his opinions on it. And that's a good thing. Um, I also would love to book a trip to go to Loch Ness and investigate for a while. That would be a really cool trip. Um, I wouldn't go there with the expectation of finding Nessie and solving it. But it would just be a really cool vacation. I'd love to set up a tent out there and just camp for a couple weeks. That'd be a lot of fun. Maybe one day we'll do it and I'll bring some cameras and stuff and we'll film it so you guys can see it. That might be fun. Um, he brought up also like the Megalodon shark. That's another great example. The Megalodon shark was a shark species that existed with dinosaurs. And some people say it still exists today. There are examples of, of whales and, and great whites and stuff like that that have gigantic bite marks out of it. And the bite radius of those wounds would match what a megalodon would do. Now, is it possible that the megalodon still exists? I would say, why, why wouldn't it be? I mean, of course. 
it could live down deep in the dark depths of the ocean where it would almost never be seen. And it could feed on, on giant squid. It could feed on whales. It could feed on other shark species. I mean, there's plenty of stuff in the ocean to feed it. So there's no reason why it couldn't exist. Um, it was definitely a very successful predator. Predators, when they're that successful, they don't usually go extinct unless there's some other force that acts upon it to cause that extinction. So it's very possible that it could still be out there. Um, I would love to find it. Not myself personally, because I'm not going in the damn ocean. But somebody would find it. That would be really cool. I don't go in the ocean because you can't, you can't fight in the ocean. If I'm on land and a lion attacks me or something like that, yes, I'll probably die, but I got a chance. You know, I can pull a knife, I can stab it, I can shoot it, I can do something. I got a chance. Underwater, what are you going to do? I mean, you got a, a shark coming at you, man. Them things swim like 20, 30 miles an hour. They come flying up on you. You ever try to punch somebody underwater? It's all slow and weak. How are you going to fight a shark? You're dead. I don't like being dead. I don't like going to a place where I'm helpless and there's just no way I can win. And in the ocean, you're screwed, man. You're going to die. If something wants to kill you, it's going to kill you. That's its home. They live there, not you. And you are not suited for that environment. So I'm not going in the ocean to look for the Megalodon. But I think it would be super cool if somebody found it. I would definitely be interested in it and check it out. Um, so that's another example of, a, of an animal that could potentially still be around. And it's a very interesting idea. Because when you're talking top of the food chain, man, you're talking apex predators... The Megalodon was an apex predator. That thing was badass. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say that it's possible that a plesiosaur could be the Loch Ness Monster. I said that earlier. Um, I went through the list of things that made me kind of wonder if it could be or not. But as I said, those could very well be mitigated by time. So... They're not disqualifiers, if that makes sense. I think that science and education, although they are important, I think that they have done a disservice for all of us. Because you go to school and you learn stuff, and basically you look in this book and it tells you what to believe. And nobody ever goes outside of that to learn anything at all anymore. I can tell you many, 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 many times when I've read something in a history book or a science book at school and it's simply not true. It's not right. And I know it's not right because I've read the latest studies on it and the information is different. But they haven't changed those books. And the teachers, they don't know, they don't know any better. I mean, they know what's in the book. They know what they were taught. They're not out there doing studies. They have no idea. I guarantee you the majority of teachers are not staying up to date on the latest studies to find stuff and, and to know what, what reality is at the time. And they teach you a lot of things in school that aren't proven. Uh, evolution is one that sticks in my throat because that evolution has never been proven. There's never been a missing link found that connects human beings to apes at all. Just because we kind of look the same and we have like hands and fingers and our face is almost the same and we walk around on all, you know, on two legs the same, that doesn't mean that, that we came from apes. There's never been a link found. And I know a lot of people are probably watching this right now thinking, oh God, here we go. You know, and you're laughing at me right now and that's okay. Show me the link. Show me the link between ape and man. If we evolved from apes, why the hell are there still apes? It's a simple question. You may think it's funny, but it's a simple question. The whole purpose of evolution is the, the species must evolve to survive. So if we evolved from apes, that means we could not survive as apes. We had to evolve to get better so we could survive the world that we were in. So shouldn't have all the apes died off? Why are there still apes? And then there's us. 
what other species on the planet can you point to where you had the evolved species and then you had the species that it evolved from still around and flourishing? Doesn't make any sense. Never been proven. But we teach it in school as fact when it's not fact. We teach in school that dinosaurs died off millions of years ago. And then mankind came along much, much later. But that's not true either. Because there are documented examples of man and dinosaur surviving and living at the same time. There was an archaeological dig that was done down in um, either Arizona or New Mexico. I forget which one. But they found human footprints in rock. And on top of the human footprint was a dinosaur print. On top of it. Which means that the human footprint was there when the dinosaur walked through there and left its print. So that is definitive proof that Homo sapien man and at least whatever species of dinosaur that was, was on Earth at the same time. So that's not true, what they teach you in school. And there's a lot of examples like that. They teach you George Washington chopped down a cherry tree and then his, his parents said, hey, did you chop down that cherry tree, boy? And he said, father, I cannot lie to you. It was I that chopped down that cherry tree. Complete BS never happened. Never happened. They teach you that George Washington had wooden teeth. Also, bold-faced lie. He owned all kinds of fake teeth. He had ceramic, he had whalebone, he had all kinds of different teeth. Not a single pair of wooden teeth. Didn't happen. So many things they teach us in school aren't true. And that has given an intellectual laziness to a lot of people, to where they're just going to blindly accept what they're told, and they never check it out for themselves. They never go look. And I think that's very sad. So... My final sum up on it, Loch Ness exists, Loch Ness Monster exists, Plesiosaurs existed, very well could still be alive today, that could be what the Loch Ness Monster is, don't know for sure, let me know down in the comment section when this hits YouTube what you guys think, um, because everybody has an opinion, right, and everybody's free to, to speak it. I hope that you enjoyed this show, I'm going to throw it back over to Old Boy here in a minute, and get his final sum up and shout outs and all that. And then we will wrap up. So, old boy, go ahead, brother. Thank you, brother. I hope everybody enjoyed the show on Parax Radio every Sunday nights at 9 Pacific, 12 Eastern. And the best of on Tuesday, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. Uh, you guys want to tell us what you think of the show? Leave your comments. We would love to hear it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys want to follow us on YouTube, go ahead and go to James Hershey's YouTube page and subscribe. All the old shows, new shows, and the paranormal news is on there also. It's a little side thing James does. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did. Um, you guys want shirts and merchandise? I'll tell you where to go. It's August, guys. Halfway through summer. So I hope you guys are enjoying your summer, staying out of the heat, keeping safe, keeping uh, healthy. So, have a good night, misfits, sugar ladies, monster lovers, demon hunters. We love you, and have a good night. Blessed be. Thank you, brother. Um, one thing I want to talk about really quickly before I go into all the shameless plugs and all that is it's very interesting that these bones were found. And the reason I say it's very interesting is because I love it when new discoveries are made that not only change, but quite honestly, totally upend what we thought we knew about some thing, no matter what it is. And especially when it's something like this that has to do with crypto, that is a creature that is loved by so many. To learn that here is actual, tangible, scientific evidence that says that maybe you're not crazy after all. Maybe this thing actually does exist. And not only does it possibly exist, but we might even know what it was. It might have been a plesiosaur. It might still be a plesiosaur. That goes a long way to figuring out its habits, its diet, its migrations. And once you have a lot of that information, you can kind of map out what it's going to do during a day. 
And that really helps you in catching it. Because you got to know where your prey is going to be. The first thing you learn when, when you're up in the mountains, if you're going to do trapping and stuff like that, is you got to find the game trails. you got to find where the animals are moving. And once you find the game trails, then you set your traps on those game trails. And depending on what you're trying to catch is what trap you're going to set. If you're going to trap like rabbits or something like that, something small, then you just go with a standard little uh, noose trap that kind of cinches on itself, and you find areas where you have cover on all sides and only one way through. And that's where you set it. That way it has to go through there. And if you have to, you build up around it a little bit to make it so that that's the only way it can go. And that's how you catch it. Um, so once you have that information and you learn the habits and the movements of the creature and what it is, then it's a hell of a lot easier to figure out how to trap it to prove that it exists. Now, the downside of trapping Nessie or any other cryptid is I know what's going to happen. They're not just going to put it in a zoo. They might for a while, but eventually one of them things are going to end up on a table somewhere and somebody's going to be cutting it open to figure out what makes it tick. Now that might be great for knowledge. That might be great for science, but it really sucks for the animal. And you might be surprised and shocked to hear this because I am a hunter and I am a, a, a mountain man, but I love animals and I don't want to see them harmed. Yes, I kill them to eat them, but I don't kill them unnecessarily. And I wouldn't kill anything just to dissect it, just to see how it ticks. I think that's cruel. And I know that's what's going to end up happening. If anybody ever catches an example of Nessie or, or Bigfoot or any of these cryptids, I think they're all going to be dissected someday because we're going to know what, want to know what makes them tick. And that really sucks. So in a way, I hope that they never do prove that Nessie exists. I hope they never prove Bigfoot exists. I hope they never catch these things. Because one thing is for sure. Whenever human beings get involved, things go bad. Whenever we get involved in trying to, to help or to shape the destiny of an animal, Things go bad for that animal every time. So I hope that these things remain mythical and legendary. And in a way, I hope that most people don't take these things seriously. Because when people start taking them seriously is when we start progressing a lot further towards the capture and dissection of one of these creatures. So that's my thoughts on it. Now for the shameless plugs. The YouTube channel is youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. If you're watching on YouTube right now, you're already there. Click the subscribe button. Hit that little thumbs up. Give me some love, man. I love you guys. You can love me back. It's okay. Um, if you're not, youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. If you're listening on the radio, that's where the YouTube channel is. On the YouTube channel is every episode of Staring, every episode of Tales from the Abyss, the TV show we do, every episode of Paranormal News, um, there's also a bunch of other cool stuff on there. Uh, it's all 100% free, paranormal content. I have even put some survival stuff on there because I'm a, I'm a redneck survival guy, so I do that kind of stuff too. So go check it out, subscribe to the channel, and binge watch to your heart's content. Enjoy. Let me know down in the comment section what you thought of the show and if you have any ideas for shows that you'd like to see in the future. In the description box of every single video is the merchandise store. There's the link there. You can click that link and you can go to the merch store and you can get all kinds of cool stuff. There's t-shirts, there's posters, there's stickers, there's coffee mugs, pillows, all kinds of stuff. You got the steering logo, you got the tails logo, you got all kinds of paranormal and horror themed merchandise that you can go and check out. If you want to support the show, it's a great way to do it. Thank you all for, for watching and hanging out with us. Let us know down in the comment section what you guys think. If you think that Nessie is a plesiosaur or something else entirely, or if you believe that Nessie doesn't exist. As always, it's up to you to make up your own mind. You decide. Till we speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do we. Bye-bye.